Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we've got a collision problem for you to look at. It's a collision between an SUV and a compact car. The SUV has twice the mass of the car and they're colliding head on. Uh, before the collision, they're moving at the same speed and we have three questions to look at. Uh, the first one is what is the speed after the collision when everything's all kind of stuck together and moving as one pile? Okay, this is a perfectly inelastic collision, uh, so we're going to use some conservation of momentum to find the final speed. Uh, another question I have is, what is the change of velocity of each object, of the SUV and of the car? How would you calculate that value? Um, and the last one I have is, what is the change of kin uh, kinetic energy of the system? Before you have the truck and the car kind of coming toward each other, there's a lot of kinetic energy in the system. Uh, during the collision, uh, you're going to lose some energy. You're going to lose some of that kinetic energy to, to heat. And we want to figure out how much energy do you lose in this collision process. All right, remember, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Leave your comments and questions down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Let's get started. All right, here's another example here. We have a SUV, which has a mass of uh, 1,800 uh, kilograms is traveling eastbound at 15 meters per second. And compact, oh, a compact car here has a mass of half of that, so it's 900 kg. And it's traveling this side again at negative 15. And again, negative just tells me the direction they collide head on and become entangled. Okay, so that's kind of a key word here, right? Entangled means after the collision, you only got one piece of stuff, okay? Find the speed of the entangled cars after the collision. Okay, so this is a conservation of momentum. So for part A, let's just look at the total momentum before the collision. So we got the momentum of the SUV you know, plus the momentum of the car. And then after, it's going to be the total momentum after. So there's only one term after. Let's just write total. All right, so this is what it looks like for the SUV. You got the mass of the SUV and the speed speed of the SUV. Now for the car, since it's traveling in the opposite direction, I'm going to call that a negative mass of the car and the speed of the car. And here this is the total mass SUV plus the mass of the car. And everything here is traveling together at one final speed, V final. All right, we can substitute our values over here. So we have uh, 1800 and multiplied by 15. And then we have minus 900 Again, multiplied by 15. Okay, uh, all of this equals uh, 1800 plus 900. Everything's traveling together at the same speed. Okay, you substitute everything in the calculator here. You should get uh, 13,500. Uh, sum both of those, you get 2700. Uh, v final. So at the end of the day, we get V final, which is equal to 5.0 meters per second. Okay. So that's the speed after. Uh, notice we get a positive value. Positive value, again, it means that it's moving in the same direction that the SUV was moving. So this is what we have, 5.0 uh, meters per second. The SUV had more momentum than the momentum of the car before the collision. So after the collision, they carry on that way. Okay, so that's it for that one. What about now? Let's find the change of velocity of each car. Okay, so let me kind of... Just clean this up, so hopefully you're done with that one. Right, let's clean this up, and let's find the change of velocity of each car. So the definition of the change of velocity would be a delta V. And what we want to do is find delta V for this, and we also want to find delta V for the car. Now velocity is a vector, so be a little bit careful. So this is V final minus V initial, and again, it's of the SUV. And this guy will be V final minus V initial, except it's going to be of the car. So if we focus on the SUV, well, the final speed is, or the final velocity rather, is 5 minus what is the initial velocity? The initial velocity is 15. Plug those in, you get minus 10 okay, uh, meters per second. That's the change of velocity. That's the definition. All right, how about for uh, the car? Well, the car is right here, and after, it's moving at 5. And it's moving to the right, so we have really plus 5 like this. Minus, what about V initial? V initial was 15, but it was moving to the left. So the way you have to do this is negative 15. So its change of velocity is actually bigger, 
and it's 20 meters per second. Okay, that is the change of velocity of each one. Okay, change of velocity here, the fact that it's negative simply tells me that it has slowed down. Okay, it's slowed down by 10. This guy has really done a lot of things. It's slowed down and it's switched directions. And the whole change was 20 uh, in the direction pointing to the right. That's why it's a positive value. Okay, but that's just a definition of the change of velocity of each one. One more thing I wanna illustrate right here is what if you were gonna look at the change of momentum of the SUV, right? The change of momentum of the SUV would be the mass of the SUV multiply by the change of the velocity. And we just calculated the change of the velocity. So let's have a look. So this would be uh, 1,800 kg, and the change of velocity would be negative 10. So this would give us negative uh, 18,000. Uh, this is in kilograms, uh, meters per second. Let's compare that now to the change of momentum of the compact car. Again, now we have the mass of the car multiplied by the change of the velocity of the compact car. In this case, you have 900 for the mass, and the change of the velocity is 20. And look what we get. Ah, 18,000 kilograms meters per second. Awesome. So this is actually what we call the impulse, right? Two different definitions of impulse, but this is what we have, and the impulse... Oops, got the U and the L mixed up over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, impulse is the same. It's just in a different direction because the force is different. Right, if you look at the SUV, the force on the SUV as it collides, the force is this way, and that's a negative direction during the collision. How about the compact car? The force on the compact car during the collision is this way. That is a positive direction as we've defined it. And let's do the change of kinetic energy of the system. So before the collision, I can look at the total kinetic energy. So let's do this uh, before and after. Okay, so what do we have? Before we have the kinetic energy of the SUV. Okay, so this one I can find. I know the mass. So the uh, equation is one half. Uh, the mass is 1800 and the speed was 15. And I got to square that thing. Uh, put that in the calculator, you should get 202,500 joules. Uh, the kinetic energy of the car before, it's one half. Uh, this is 900, and it's also moving at 15 squared. This is only the speed, right? You don't have to worry about the negative sign. Uh, so this should be half. So 101, 250. So the total energy before is you have to add both of those up, right? That's K total. So again, if I add both of those up, okay, total, before the collision, I should get 303, uh, 750. Okay, so that's it before the collision. Now let's look at after the collision. After the collision, this is what we have, right? We have K final. There's only one term. There's only one chunk of stuff that's moving. It's one half. The mass now is uh, 2,700, right? Because you have to add the 1,800 plus the 900. And everything was moving at five, and you gotta square that value. So that means that my K final, K final is equal to, it's pretty small, uh, 33,750 is what I got. That's measured in joules. All right, so all we have to do now is find what is the change of kinetic energy, right? That's what we're asking for, the change in kinetic energy. So that's always a final value minus an initial value. An initial is the initial of the system. So in this case, it's final minus initial. So you get 33750 minus 303,750. All right, and at the end, the final change in kinetic energy, I got negative 270,000 joules. Okay, uh, this here is the change in kinetic energy. Uh, the negative value here just tells me that I lost energy. Okay, where did that energy go? Okay, uh, most of it turns into heat, right? You imagine bending all this metal here. Some of it gets uh, propagated as sound, but most of it just goes into bending the metal and eventually gets lost uh, from heat. Okay, 
So kind of a nice problem here involving a lot of different terms over here, but you could see now in a perfectly inelastic collision that I start off with a lot of kinetic energy and I end up having a little bit of kinetic energy. Okay, I lose quite a bit uh, in that collision.